Hi, in this video we're looking at electron configurations. Now a little warning at the beginning here. Uh, this is only the first half of the full explanation about what electron configuration is. This is just enough for us to get a general idea of what it is. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about the periodic table before you get the full explanation. So this is just the basics. Uh, there will be a later video that explains the full story behind electron configuration, why some of the things that you're going to see in this video are the way they are. Uh, and so just kind of know that going in. This is chapter one of two chapters. So let's get started. There's a good chance you've been to a movie theater and walked in to see something like this. A bunch of groups of people spread out throughout the theater. And then you need to find seats together for the size of your group. And this is the worst. So let's say it's opening night for a blockbuster movie. And theater staff is restricting entry to the next rows until the row before it is filled. Now, I've actually never seen this done, but I've heard that this can be done for really popular movies. Uh, it might happen something like this. Okay, so the first row is filled up, and then they can open up the second row. Great, now that's filled, uh, and then the third row can open, and so on. And note that in this analogy here, which we'll come back to uh, quite a bit in this video, it takes more energy for people to climb higher into the movie theater. So they start with the lowest energy row, the first row, where there's no stairs really involved. It's also the smallest row, so not as many people can fit in the first row as can fit in the fifth row, let's say. So the atoms electron shells experience something similar to what I just showed you with the movie theater. As review, we know the atom has seven energy shells, what we call uh, orbitals. This is the Bohr planetary model, which we'll use for this explanation because it's simpler to see where electrons exist. But know again that there is more to the explanation here. Shell one is the smallest and requires the least amount of energy for an electron to be there. Kind of like the first row in the movie theater is the smallest, and you don't need to exert much energy to get there compared to their rows farther up. Uh, because shell one is the smallest, it can hold the fewest electrons, and as we go farther away from the nucleus, like shell two, three, four, five, six, seven, more electrons can exist in those shells because they're bigger. Uh, or as in the movie theater, there are more seats in those rows. And there's a simple equation used to determine the maximum number of electrons that can fit in any one shell and it's 2n squared, where n is the shell number, 1 through 7. So let's use this on each shell. If n is 1, 2 times 1 squared is 2 times 1, which is just 2. So a maximum of 2 electrons can fit into the first shell. If n is 2, 2 times 2 squared is 2 times 4, so eight, eight, uh, eight electrons can fit in shell two. And we can carry out this math to get an increasingly higher 18, 32, 50, 72, 98. More and more electrons can fit into each shell as we get farther and farther away from the nucleus, right in that uh, center of the atom. So to write simple electron configurations, we write the number of electrons in each shell separated by a dash. So let's try writing the configuration for the smallest element, hydrogen. An atom of hydrogen has one proton and therefore one electron. Electrons will generally fill in order from shell one to seven. So hydrogen's lonely electron is in shell one. There it is, the electron is just a one. So no need to put anything beyond that. If subsequent shells have zero electrons in them, we just stop writing. Uh, let's try helium now. So just two electrons in this. We can fit the first in the first shell. And then because we have room for the other one, we can also place the second electron in the first shell too. Uh, and so what's the electron configuration for helium? It's two. Okay, lithium, three electrons, one in the first shell, another in the first shell, so we have two in the first shell. There's still one more electron in lithium, but it can't be in the first shell because that's full. So that third electron must exist in the second shell. And so here's our configuration for lithium. It's two dash one. Okay, let's go with a slightly larger example now. Nitrogen, seven electrons, one, two in the first shell, and now we've hit our maximum there. The remaining five electrons can fit into the second shell just fine. So two dash five. Notice that our numbers should always be adding up to the total amount of electrons. We wanted to place seven electrons in this, and two plus five is equal to seven, so that's good. Okay, much larger example now with chlorine. Chlorine atoms have 17 electrons, so one, two in the first shell, and again, we've hit our 
maximum for the first shell there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight can fit in the second shell, but we're now capped out there. Um, let's think about this. We've placed two plus eight equals 10 electrons so far, and we have to fit seven more electrons into this configuration. The remaining seven can fit in the third shell because the third shell has a maximum of 18. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is. 2-8-7. Now, what if I had an ion instead of an atom? Like uh, chlorine with a negative 1 charge instead of just chlorine as an atom with no charge. Well, remember, this is the configuration of the electrons in the atom, so we need to determine the number of electrons in this ion. Chlorine always has 17 protons, but in this situation it contains 18 electrons. So we'll need to place 18 total electrons in this configuration. So instead of 2-8-7, which represents 17 electrons, we need one more to make 18. 2-8-8 will do it. All right, one more for good measure. Aluminum ion with a 3 plus charge. How many protons does aluminum have? Well, the periodic table tells me it's atomic number 13. So 13 protons. Uh, now, how many electrons are in this particular ion? With a 3 plus charge, I must be missing 3 electrons. So therefore, 10 electrons in this. So let's place 10 electrons into this configuration then. 2 can fit in the first shell, and then 8 can fit in the second shell, and that's it. We're done. 2-8 is the electron configuration for this. Okay, so now try these three for yourself. Pause the video now and give it a shot. We've got beryllium, fluorine, and a phosphorus ion with a three minus charge. So beryllium as an atom without a charge has four electrons total, so two dash two would be the configuration. Uh, fluorine without a charge, nine electrons total, two dash seven. And then phosphorus with a three minus charge means 15 protons, but 18 electrons total, so two dash eight dash eight. Okay, so that's it. This is just part one of our two-part series on electron configuration. Know that this is not the whole story. This is just the general introduction to this concept. We're going to add more to this as we learn more chemistry throughout the year. So uh, check back for advanced electron configuration uh, for the full explanation. Thank you.